Welcome to Garage Talk. Uh, live right now, not live for you, live for us uh, at Worldwide Technology Raceway. It's the NHRA uh, Midwest Nationals. And uh, we're sitting here with a legend, the only NHRA driver that I actually knew of before we came here. The only name that I knew in this, I got to watch him race in SRX this year. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't a straight, but but you had it going. Well, I did go straight one time. I probably, that was the end of That was the best part. Close, I know. Yeah. That was, that was definitely the best part. I mean, this is Ron Caps. The legend himself is here. We cannot be happier, and we're more, like, more thrilled to have you. And for our first NHRA event, to get to sit and talk with you is just amazing, man. So thanks so much for being on the show. Dude, uh, first of all, I'm excited because it's your first. Now, you've never been to a drag race live? Never in Either my life. Guys? We're, we're, I mean, I've been a NASCAR IndyCar guy. I've watched an NHRA on TV. Like, I've, I was more familiar with the names. Just so you heard, you heard somebody warmed up earlier. Right? Tony might have. Yeah, that was. So we you kind of got a little. My ears fell off. Did, uh, Ron, that was the loudest. Too, that, I know. I knew. I know you're yeah. gonna say, "Oh, it's not that." That was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. You get used to okay. it, though. That, now the runs when the car is under load, like even when you go up in the the first burnout, you're gonna hear the burnout. The cars, you know, we roll through water, then you hit the gas. You only open the blades like this much, dude. But that will be louder but not still close to what do you mean by opening the blades uh to do the burnout we have a throttle stop on them and they only they only because it's twelve thousand horsepower so literally to do the burnout we they have a a a throttle stop so we only push it a little bit and oh i see it it, it's about the width of the back side the side that you put into a drill chuck it's about the width of a drill bit is the amount of throttle that we open to do the burnout. So when you watch a car do the burnout coming up here, um, that imagine the throttle blades. If you can imagine on your iRacing rig, of only opening that much. And so what I'm saying is the burnout's going to be loud, er, way louder. Sure. But nothing compared to when the car is under load during a run. It's going to blow your mind. I know everybody keeps saying it, and I I, we hearing. know that was just a taste. I know everybody's yeah. been telling you, and you're gonna hear it, and not a. But it's nothing until we see it, though. Right? Yeah. I mean, you, I could sit here and blow it up your rear end about how loud it's gonna be, and it's gonna shake the ground. It'll still be not even close to what you're gonna witness and feel. I'm expecting the force of creation at this point. I'm you will, be honest. It's a religious experience for a lot of people. It really <laughs> is. Like that's what and Antron was telling us. Like the yeah. feel is what you're gonna be. Yeah, yeah. it's metaphysical. By, like, yeah, I was listening to uh, your podcast. Metaphysical. Wow. Yeah. wow. I'm a big word guy. I'm a wizard, low key. I don't. The, tell the mustache a lot of people I that. thought was fake, but now I know with words yeah. like that. Jeez. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you, metaphysical. You told us before you can grow a big one. Why, why don't you? I'm grow gonna. Well, I don't know about a big one, but I can. I can grow one. What's oh, it gonna okay. take for me to get the sharpie out and draw a mustache <laughs> on you? So what you do you like a little Dudley Do Right one? Let me do it. <laughs> yeah. Let me do a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How yeah. amazing would that be? That would be great yeah, to be start cool. off the car and do it. We got I brake was, clean. We can clean it off afterwards. Amen, dude. That's what I'm saying. I feel like by, by the time you get out of the car, the, how fast it goes, it'll be gone. It'll be completely gone. I think I'm next to Matt Hagen tonight, so it, it would be funny for me to take it off and have a, a Sharpie mustache. He'd, he'd Psychological. Look at, yeah, he'd, yeah. Get yeah, in I mean, his head, he'd, man. He would probably be like, what <laughs> the heck? I think we're going to do this. We'll, we'll let you know. To be determined. But I was <laughs> listening to uh, – so I, I got to talk uh, – we had Kenny Wallace on our show not long ago. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Kenny. Uh, he's going to be here on Sunday. I got to listen to you and him show and you when you were talking about the load and everything and hearing you talk about just like the amount of just pressure, like how limited it is coming off the clutch and then going in there. Like I'm trying to like really wrap my head around just exactly what that feels like. I mean, it basically, it's like I told Tony, it's got to be like an astronaut blasting off to space. It is. And I used to... You know, because what's, what's cool, we talk about iRacing and how early I was involved in iRacing. And, like, we'd have, I'd have these other drivers come out to the drags for the first time, whether it was Dale Jr. or an Andretti or somebody like that. And you're trying to not impress them, but you want to show, you know, that they're always curious. Like, I would go race something else. And, like, when we did the Prelude to the Dream Race, you know, every yeah. swinging, badass NASCAR driver, IndyCar, they were all in it. And they all wanted to know what it felt like to go 330 miles an hour, right? So, the, so I'd have to explain what we did in a car, and they're all, and it was funny. I'd start to talk about it, and there'd be like 10 people around. You know, you have like Tony Kanon and Castro Nevis and <laughs> Truex and guys, and just they're trying to get, grasp what it feels like to step on 12,000 horsepower. And so I'd, I'd go through. Well, we have a handbrake and not a footbrake. So when I stage the car, 
I actually have this big handbrake sticking up, and that's how I, I roll the car forward on the Christmas tree. Yeah. And when the light flashes green, really yellow, but you hit the gas and let go of that brake as split second and as quickly as you can, but you try to do it exact same time. And it's almost crucial that you do it. And then you hang on. There's no shifting. So what I used to tell those guys, the way I would explain it is, remember we were younger and like when the first, well, I don't know how young you are, but remember Battlestar Galactica when that show came out? I do that remember that time? show. Be- before Star Wars and all the, the space movies now where they go to hyperspace, right? And yeah. those lines. Buzz Lightyear would be good for, well, Star- for the kiddos oh, yeah. today. The, the first Star Wars was in like the yeah. 70s, though. Okay, yeah, like yeah. you hit it and then boom, those lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's what it's like in these things, and, and it, with the exception of the exact pinpoint spot that I'm looking, everything, it's like this little tunnel circle where you're looking, and everything else is like that first space movie you saw when they go, okay, we're going to hyperspace, and boom. That sounds like an acid trip and in real life. Ju- and then you have these two four straps holding your head from going back, so you're just pinned. You're like an astronaut, and you're just trying to keep your eyes straight. And in a funny car, you're trying to keep it straight, and you're just hanging on for dear life. There's no shifting. There's no nothing. And we basically have a button we hit for the parachutes, and I hit that about two football fields before I get to the finish line. Because wow. by the time I hit the button, the cable comes out, I've gone easily two oh, football fields. Wait, so you hit that button even though you could be in a dead heat? Dude, with- I hit it. So you would laugh if you were riding with me and you saw my thumb go down. Uh, where I was at on the track. Like you're going to lose the race, man. Yeah, because there's times where you, the car maybe doesn't run as quick as it normally does, and you hit it, and you're like, oh, my God, is it too soon? So, but, yeah, we hit it way wow. ahead. You're, it's kind of like time travel is what it sounds like to me right now. Do you, do you yeah. think, and you may know this, if an average person like myself or Chase – just hopped in one Dead. and just rode. <laughs> would we just pass out? You'd poop yourself, probably. <laughs> Most Shit. people would probably, if they were, if they were, like I'm not good at riding and other stuff. When people try to scare oh, I, you, I right? Yeah. I'm not yeah. a good yeah. passenger. I'm not bad, dude. Like, but I'm a control freak. I like to drive. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. And I would probably sharp myself if I was somebody, normal person, to put in one of these cars and strapped in and then blasted down there. You start Ron Cap's ride-alongs. Yeah, yeah please, let's, see, let's see how much. Yeah. Yo, you got to wear a diaper. That's yeah. part of the deal. We'll get a diaper That's sponsor. That's it. Now, Boom. Wanna, Money, go ahead. Baby. Go ahead. I don't well, no, I was just going to say, I mean, there, there's so much to your career. I know we talk about this. And like, with every conversation I'm having, the more we're here, the more it's really kind of sinking into me, like, how different this is, especially you talking about, you talking with these other drivers of these other series, like, and they're thinking about doing it. Obviously, there, there, there's a – way stricter and different training regimen I feel like you have to go through and also just the amount you know pardon my friends the amount of balls that you have to have to do something like this because like I imagine this is you being like a three-year-old getting on a roller coaster for grown-ups that's probably the way it, it's a great yeah. comparison and maybe even more hardcore than that but your your career everything that you've done it, it's you know going to SRX you're trying new things I would love to see you know some NASCAR guys or some IndyCar guys come over and I mean, because I feel like it, the same thing might happen to them, you know. So it, it now just really getting to comprehend that it's it, it's next level, and, and you've had this in your blood. It's running through your veins for for so long. Your brother also. I wanted to ask you about this, and I know we're kind of jumping topics crazy, but your brother is a Hollywood stunt man. So this is really something in y'all's veins. Just yeah. the adrenaline of just doing on the edge stuff. Yeah, so, and well, he he does drive. He races. He, he, he'll, and he's more impressive because I, I get in, you know, we get in and we have a weekend off and I get in the car for the first time after a race, a weekend off, and I'm blown away by the car. I've been doing it for 29 years, but he, he'll get little small deals and he'll take them to a team and he'll show up after being out of a car for a year and get in one of these things. And the ones he gets in when he brings a sponsor aren't prepared exactly. Nothing wrong with what he's bringing money to, but it's a lower tier team, right? Right. And so... He's, he's pretty courageous, but, yeah, he's been in all kinds of movies, and, uh, you know, it's fun. He's one of the funnest people I, I be around because we're, we're competitive as hell, and no matter what we're doing, whether, you know, we're up go-karting or we're whatever, we're, it's competition, and it's always about driving. So Christmas time, if they come visit us, we're out in the garage on the simulator, and he's on my <laughs> iRacing rig, and the girls are in there watching movies, and we just – have beers outside and we can stay on there all day long and just anything racing 
What's your favorite? So we were talking before, as we've kind of mentioned, uh, iRacing. We in the Monday Night Racing League together. Um, what's your favorite thing to do if you just want to hop on the sim and have fun? What is? Because I mean, you don't have this out there. I don't no. even know how you could simulate this and it'd be fun. Because we've I mean, talked about speed. it. Yeah. Imagining is this is the sim. But yeah. like, what, what is? Yeah. What's your What's your favorite thing to run on iRacing when you get oh, that chance? Oh man. Um, so my brother and I, if I don't, if he doesn't jump in a race because he's, he's, you know, he's in my house, he's me. When he's got his rig at home, he's got the VR headset. Oh, man. Um, and we race in a lot of leagues together. Um, so I, I would say what we like to do is we'll pick a gnarly fast track and we'll do an open wheel, non-wing, sprint car midget someplace gnarly. And then we'll take turns and go 10 laps and then jump, switch seats oh, and see, see who can outrun each other like in practice. IndyCar Talladega? I've done that. Yeah, that, I, that that's the get, only one I've ever done. I screamed. Get twitchy, yeah. That's, I hadn't played around with dirt. I think it's just it's a learning curve when you. Yeah. I'm used to do. I don't have a crazy rig like. It's literally. Like, we don't either. You know, I mean, like the Timmy Hill rig. You yeah, know, no, no. Just we, strapped on a desk and that's it. We like, got a nice seat. Desk and I mean, shakes. You know, nothing. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. crazy. I bought it during COVID when we figured things were going to get gnarly. So nothing expensive yeah, either. So you like the dirt though? You think the dirt is probably? We usually just pick something that's going to be tough, so we can battle with each other. Um, we might also pick like a Silver Crown car, like at a Pikes Peak or uh, someplace fast, where it's just you're out of control and you're just trying to hang on, and then it becomes a, a challenge, you know, to, to set fast time. That's usually what we'll do. Now, that's a good segue into talking about dirt. You did SRX. We mentioned that earlier. You did well. We were, Tony was bragging on you. Tony was bragging on you for how you're doing. He said everybody was watching. They're like, yeah. "Holy shit, Ron's doing a hell of a holy. job." So I said the same how thing. Was I was out in the lead, going, "Holy <laughs> shit!" <laughs> how was that? I know it didn't end well, but how was that experience? Uh, it was, it was, uh, it was nerve wracking because Tony Stewart and uh, a couple other people texted me the week before, and it was just a picture of a board with a bunch of numbers, and I didn't I forget where I was at. I was at a concert or something. I'm like, "What the hell?" Well, it turned out they had picked, they picked the heat lineups the previous week and i was on the pole for the first race oh, wow. of the first the first time i was ever going to drive one of those at eldora i mean it was, and they're like oh by the way you're starting to on pole so so that was a week of just agonizing i was i didn't sleep Dude. good i was nervous i was giving tony crap i'm like you guys sure you want me starting on the pole you sure you didn't rig this to, me, no. to mess with me i mean I, it sounds like he did it for his amusement that sounds like yeah. a tony thing i've I, never met tony stewart yet but i've been oh a, and a, then okay bobby yeah. labani's on my outside guess who's behind me uh, tony stewart yeah starting third i'm like oh it just got worse so every every moment i sat at the house in my off week and was not doing anything i was thinking about starting on the pole at eldora in front of god in the world on espn with I don't know how many of the most badass race car drivers all lined up behind me. And so I'm in a car up. that I haven't even been in at Eldora. So I was a wreck. Are you? Um, uh, do you think you would do it again? Would you oh do yeah, it? I yeah. Okay. And I I hope I get. I mean, heck. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we're trying to break some news right yeah, there, Ryan. Yeah, 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 break yeah, a little I, news? I don't want to jinx anything right now. No, big, sure. big news, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah, no, it was. They, they're coming to iRacing now. SRX is just oh, partnering with iRacing. So you'll have a, a, a great way to get some practice And in that's right the there. thing. I was home on a Monday night from wherever, and then I flew on a Tuesday. I had a flight to Indy, and then we drove into, you know, Eldora and just got a room for a couple nights. I, and I, I was flying home the previous race, and I'm thinking, how do I practice for Eldora? I've been in a dirt late model there when I ran the Prelude, and I could go run that. But that's a weird suspension. That's all that weird stuff, right? And I'm like, what could I pick? I called the guys at iRacing, um, and everybody pretty much came to, to the agreement like an ARCA car, something stock car-ish, but the ARCA seemed a lighter and it had more power than a cup car, right, or a truck. Because I went to the Toyota Simulator two weeks before that, and they put me in a truck at Bristol. And Slugger Labby, who works for Toyota, was like, dude, you weren't far off the quickest truck driver for Toyota on the dirt. So I was running pretty good lap time. I was like, really? Well, way different, right? Di Bristol and Eldora are different. But I, I got a little more confidence after that. But I was like, what do I do? So I ran, I was home one night. I got in the Arca car, got on Eldora, told my wife, please don't bug me for about an hour. <laughs> yeah. And I wrecked and wrecked and wrecked until I was going around and I was kind of getting a little bit. And honest to God, it was pretty close because those Elmore engines, they make a lot of power in those, those uh, 
SRX cars. I can imagine. Dude, that man. is so. I just. It's mind boggling to think about thinking about iRacing and what it's turned into and how actually helpful it can be to you guys. It blows my mind. And I, what's I just, funny is I flew with Smoke because we had to race Kansas. So I flew on his plane with him after the race into Kansas. Leah, his wife, and I were running and he dropped us off at like 2 in the morning. Then they flew to Knoxville, right? Um, so I just remember going into turn one for the. I went out for first practice and I was like fifth quick. And I came in, I'm like, I should just leave right now, yeah. right? And while I'm, ahead, <laughs> I'm up on the board, I'm fifth quick, like, I should just get out of town, safe face. But um, I, it was funny because when the when they dropped the green, I went a couple corners, and I, I was, David Stremme went over a couple things with me, and I was kind of doing what he said. And I, I went to Kenny Schrader, and he, he's an old friend, and so he told me a couple things. So I just started kind of doing that. And nobody was around me. It was like two laps in. I'm like, they've got to be swarmed around me right yeah. now because you don't know what's going on. And I'm just kind of hanging in. And then fourth lap, I'm like, shoot, I'm still leading. And it's still green, so I, I don't want to look up the scoreboard where the, the big screen is, right? So, I, and I'm practicing. I'm doing a line that I learned Monday night in the ARCA car. I swear to God. And I had done it before racing Monday night when we had a race there. And I was going in and kind of floating up and kind of hitting the exit, but not a slide job line, but sort of like it. And I remember how good it was when we ran the iRacing thing. So fast forward, here I am, and I know I can hear Tony getting closer. A couple corners, I could hear something. I go, oh, he's playing with me. He told me that night, he goes, dude, I was behind you, and I was so impressed with your car. He said, I forgot to drive my car. He goes, I was just following you, watching your line. And he he was like, he was super proud, right? Because he was like, I'm sure he was thinking, drag racer don't make a mistake and right, pile up right. everybody in the first turn but yeah. Yeah, it was cool to hear him say that that was the biggest compliment i could have ever got well That's i have a awesome. gift kind of yeah. sort of so Uh-oh. you know i'm a beast on the i race sim particularly super speedways take a lot of skill obviously i stay a week i've won a lot of races i, I wear these nice and um <laughs> if you get another oval shot which I- i'm gonna go on a limb i don't want to jinx it are you giving might. me those I- no i oh, just want you to play <laughs> You get the good so, energy, though, by yeah. wearing them for a second. Right. So, Here, I'll if, hold your mic. I got you. I'll imagine if he wore mic. those with the Sharpie mustache right now. There you go. Yeah. See that? That is going to help you on ovals. Yeah. Can't you feel it already? Let me, let me do my uh, Mark Martin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got to get the elbow well, up. Wax on, wax yeah. on. Well, yeah, him and Dale Jr., the way they drive. is. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come off the wheel and then they... I tried that and I wrecked. Yeah, by the way. that is a weird driving style. Yeah. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that that's got to be like the coolest yeah, thing cool about it. I think like like guys like you being able to go run the oval, having Tony coming from running the oval races he has now over to here. Uh, the one thing that you can say though that they don't have is that you're a SAG guy. You're a SAG member. <laughs> um, uh, have you watched any new movies? Have they mailed you any good movies this month? Uh, no, we get them. We usually get them in December. Okay. It's, it's always the best Christmas because if people come to visit, I'm not supposed to share the movies. Mm-mm, no, right, my, right. Uncle, my uncle is, is right there with it, so yeah. I, I know the I know the drill. So you know? it's been so fun over the years that when people come to visit, we get the movies that are just out in the theaters that are all over the news, and now it's going to win awards, and we have it at the house, and we can have this small viewing. You know, my family's always dug that. I, I thought that was the best part. That little paper sleeve, baby. Yeah. Just like, what's <laughs> yeah. up? Oh, yeah. Talking about that. some entertainment stuff. Yeah. We, we read something that we both really liked. Um, you're a big Howard Stern guy. Yes. Yeah. Dude, Private Parts, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Love that movie. Did you have some kind of involvement with Howard Stern any type of way, shape, or form? Is that what I read? No. So um, I've always been a huge fan. In fact, when I drove for Don Perdome, Snake is the biggest Howard Stern fan. So it was on at the shop, on... In his car, if you get in, it was always on when he was on terrestrial, right? When he was on regular radio. Sure. And I've told a few people this story. Uh, 9-11, I woke up to Howard Stern. That's how I learned about 9-11. I was on the West Coast. So obviously earlier, my alarm had gone off, and I'm laying in bed just trying to wake up slowly, and it's Howard Stern, and they're talking about the buildings. And and just I I play it back in my head sometimes. It's, It's crazy to listen. They're getting ready to start my car. Oh, they did? Okay. Oh. Um, he, he about to turn up. No, no, we're fine. I got five minutes. All right, beautiful. So I just I remember that. waking up, and that's how I learned of 9-11, which is crazy. And so anyway, I've just been a, a huge fan. And my publicist got me on the, uh, the wrap-up show about, I don't know, 10 years ago. But I'd had this relationship, sort of friendship start with Ronnie, the limo driver, prior to that. 
And Ronnie's been going to NASCAR racing. He was buddies with Kurt Busch and all that. Yeah. yeah. And they love to rib him on the show. So now he lives in Vegas, and he's come out to our Vegas race three or four times. But uh, I got invited back to the wrap-up show again, and I Hell went back yeah. the second time. And it's crazy to walk in that place after being a listener and to walk in and just see everything and sit down and, and run into Baba Booey and be on the, the same. <laughs> it's got to be so surreal, dude. And it, look, and it looks like a great studio. Well, the first I mean, time I was on the wrap-up show, I'm sitting across from him, and he's talking to me, and he's got notes. And I, I couldn't even answer him the first time. I'm just I'm just staring at him. I'm like, this is weird. This Baba is Booey life. is talking to me right now. He's asking me questions. I can't even get over it. So, that yeah, it was very, story, very dude. strange. So aside from the Howard Stern thing, too, I know you're, you're a big rock enthusiast. You love rock music. Who's your favorite band? G- give me, like, one song, favorite band that comes to mind like that. Oh, man. Well, Metallica's probably they, they got a, you know, probably my all-time fan. I'm friends with James Hetfield. Uh, they've been since I was a kid. I mean, I remember listening to, you know, Jump in the Fire and all those songs. So big influence on me as a kid, and I would say still. And Have you seen them live? I've never seen them oh, live, but I'm a big fan of For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yes, great song. Yeah. But it's one I, I've gone with other musicians to their shows, and they're blown away by how tight they are. And there's a reason they're Metallica. But yeah, that's probably I, I, I go anything old school as far as a song. 80, yeah. like 80s, 90s. I'd even go like, um, yeah. I love my favorite uh, is Van Halen with David Lee Roth. Yeah, man. yeah, love that's Van hard Halen. to beat that's too. Great. You heard of uh, you you heard you heard of uh, Sleep Token? No. Uh-uh. Yeah, they're like this new. They're like the new metal now. That's oh. like the new the new Sleep metal. Sleep Token. Yeah. Like thrash. Kind of. I, well, he wears a mask. He's kind of like Slipknot, like but this? it's more chill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, nah, you can't no. be that cool. No, nah, nah, it looks like something that you that you would see on like a really bad night. Like you you see that if you see that guy's face, it's like a bad times happening, but also good. Hey. But look, we know you got to get out of here, brother. We're excited to see everything rolling this weekend. We're gonna be here. We're gonna catch up with you again too, man. Just thanks so much for being hey, on the man. show, brother. Yeah, thanks for we having. Appreciate that. Appreciate so much. this weekend, that don't steal fun. those from me. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's taking them. He's gonna run now. <laughs> This has been Garage Talk. Look, you guys know everywhere out there, check out Ron Caps, everything he has going on with the team, the Napa Auto Parts, Toyota GR Super Funny Car. It's going down this weekend. Make sure you check out all the highlights, all the replays from Worldwide Technology Raceway, NHR Midwest Nationals. This has been Garage Talk, signing off.